2021. This is the highlights of 2021 in reviews and other features and what just it's a big uh, potpourri of stuff that went down this year. And, and one of the recurring segments this year is the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day, which will appear at the conclusion of today's show. But if, by the way, if you want to include your system, if you want to take a shot, send me some JPEGs of your system, nice pictures, well-lit pictures, nicely composed pictures of your system, whether it's DIY or new or horns or tubes or solid state, whatever it is, Take cool pictures and I'll take a check. I'll look at them and I pick the best ones and I put them up here. So if you want to send yours in, send them to me, audiophiliac at mail.com. And of course, include descriptions of what's in the pictures. But in terms of the reviews of what went down this year, well, the one of the most recent reviews, the Spatial Audio Lab M4 Sapphire Open Baffle Speakers. After I finished the review, I was still listening to them. I didn't want to see them go just, just yet. They had to go back to the manufacturer, but I just spent a couple of extra days listening to them. And, and while I was doing that, one of my pals came by, an audio reviewer himself, and he's sitting there listening, and he was saying things like, oh man, wow. He was so blown away. I don't think he'd ever actually heard an open baffle speaker before. So he was thrilled. And we were playing uh, the Allman Brothers Live at the Fillmore record. We both know that record so well. And just the feeling of an event, the music was an event. That's what made it just so special. So yeah, that's definitely one of the highlights of the year, the Spatial Audio Lab M4 Sapphire speakers, definitely. And you know, my interview with Jana we did, we did one a couple of years ago, but we did one this year, and it was so great to catch up with her. She came here. We did the, the interview here. She was very comfortable. It was a long interview. She talked about what she's up to, what's going on in her life, what's going on in her professional life. It was great to catch up, and the comments were so supportive of Jana. So if you missed the Jana interview, uh, I'm going to link it below. So everything I refer to in this video, there will be links in the description. Another standout this year was the Genelec G3 monitor speaker. Now it's an active speaker. I don't usually do that many actives, but you know, it's a pro sound speaker and the finish, oh, the finish on this speaker is raw aluminum. It's a cast aluminum uh, cabinet, a uh, little speaker, stand mount speaker, but it just kind of grabbed me. It was so much fun. It was so rhythmic, the bass definition, the openness, the clarity of this speaker were really spectacular. So that is definitely one of the highlights of the year. This is from my interview with Spencer. He put his amp on a throne. He's an artist, he's a guitar player, he's been a DJ, he's had an amazing life. We went deep, very deep. Next up was the Bottlehead Moreplay line preamplifier. It was a kit. Pretty easy to build kit. My friend uh, Dave King actually did the work of putting it together for me. He also painted and made this really cool color combination. And then I listened to it and I thought, well, yeah, it's very, very tubey sounding in the best sense. And for $439 for the kit, I think it's really pretty spectacular. So that was also a highlight of 2021. So another highlight of the year is definitely the Technics SL1200GR direct drive turntable. That one's sticking around. That's kind of on a medium to long-term loan because I'm using it as a test bed for different cartridges. I've done some cartridge reviews. I did the MoFi Master Tracker and some Grados and an Audio Technica, which was only like $65, which is really, really good. Uh, so anyway, I love this turntable. Um, it's going to be here for, at least for the beginning of 2022. And uh, it's, it's one of those really pleasant surprises. That's one of the, the best parts about my job is being surprised by something. It's like I get in a lot of product to review and a lot of it is what I think it's going to be. But sometimes they rise above. They absolutely do. The best sounding speaker of the year, hmm. Now, I didn't get to compare all of them to each other at the same time, obviously. But the best sounding speaker of the year is the Dyn Audio Heritage Special. 
made in Denmark, beautiful cabinet, a limited edition of I think 20 or 250 pair were going to be made. Uh, but it just, it, you know, I always used to think of Dynoidio speakers as being on the laid back side, a little soft and round. This one was high resolution, really fast sounding, great imaging, just a beautiful, beautiful looking speaker and a gorgeous sound, really spectacular. <laughs> oh, and then there's the Mola Mola Tambaki DAC. The best sounding DAC I have ever heard in this room, right? That's the point. I'm not talking about DACs I've heard in other places. I have to have them here to make these, let's say, pronouncements, right? The Mola Mola rises above the other high-end DACs I've heard in its resolution, but its beauty. It's this combination of beautiful sound and incredible detail and res resolution that's just there. You know, it's kind of, it's, it's sort of like real life. When you hear uh, a concert with, let's say, acoustic instruments, you don't sit there saying, oh my God, the resolution is amazing. No, it's just there, right? The music is just there. And that's what goes down with the Mola Mola. The music is just there. It's not that it's digital. It doesn't sound like analog. It's just, well, just right. That's Herb Reichert from Stereophile. And we were talking about the point, the point of diminishing returns and a million other things. Fun stuff. That's a wide shot of Devon's system. Obviously, he's into horns in a big way and tubes and analog. He's got a great sounding room. It's probably the best system I've heard this year. The audio by Van Alstein set 120 amplifier. Now it's it has a volume control, so you could say it's an integrated amp, but they prefer to call it a power amplifier, uh, a high gain power amplifier. And the Van Alstein amp just had this ease to it. It's a solid state class AB 60 watt per channel amplifier, but it was very relaxed sounding. It wasn't all about resolution. It was just about musicality. It is a very musical, easygoing, no frills amplifier, no remote control, <laughs> no, no specifications really were provided by the manufacturer of the power rating. It's just, it's just there, right? It's, a, it's, if you're into make it, keep it simple, stupid, right? If you want things simple and straight ahead, this is the amplifier for you. Just spectacular. And then I did uh, one called the top five reasons not to buy new speakers. Because a lot of what I'm doing here is essentially telling you, oh, check out this new speaker, check out this new speaker. So I wanted to turn it around and say, maybe you don't need to buy new speakers. So the premise of that show was, if you basically like the speakers you already have, then don't buy new speakers. Because they're good. Just make what's in front of them, meaning the electronics and the source, better. As you improve the amplifier, the, your speakers that you already have will sound better. If you get a better DAC or a better turntable or a cartridge or something, these speakers that you already own will sound better. And that was the gist of the top five reasons not to buy new speakers. Then there was the Triangle Comet 40th Anniversary Edition. Gorgeous speaker, real rosewood, beautiful high gloss finish. It's a horn loaded, has a horn loaded tweeter, very live sounding speaker, but a, such a beautiful speaker. And as I said, it's an anniversary speaker. It is handmade in France. The regular Comet, the non 40th anniversary model is made in China. Uh, but the 40th anniversary is made in France. Each one is measured in an anechoic chamber to make sure it's within its spec. Uh, each one is listened to by a triangle technician. They really go all out to make this a very special speaker. And it is for, as I said, it's liveliness, it's beauty. You know what it's like? It's like a super version of the Klipsch RP600M. It's, it's like a much, much better version of that. That's what makes it so cool. To finish this episode up, I have to mention the under 30 audiophiliac viewer systems of the day, because that was all about people under 30 sending me their systems and the sheer diversity of what I saw of DIY and vintage and new and horns and solid state and from women, a couple of women 
One of the, one of the uh, viewers was 11 years old who sent me pictures of his system. I think it was a boy. But in any case, really, really cool stuff. And, and you know, like this is the future of the game, of this hobby, is the next generation. And this, this set of people under 30 audiophiles, they lifted me up. I really felt good looking at all those pictures. Hugs and kisses go out to the love of my life, Mrs. Audiophiliac. I could not make these videos without her support. You know, I wish I could include more. And obviously I work very hard on producing now two episodes a week. Uh, so please, if you have the time, you know, binge watch a bunch if you're off for the holidays and stuff. Anyway, before we go though, it is now time for today's Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. Hello guys. Hey, this one comes from Diogo. He's a 35-year-old audiophile living in Lisbon, Portugal. His speakers are Proac D30RS. The amp is a Yamaha AS2100 integrated. He's also using the built-in uh, moving coil phono stage. The turntable is a Technics SL1200GR. That's what I'm using right now. The cartridge is an Audio-Technica AT-OC9XEB moving coil. CD player, that's a 20-year-old Marantz DR700. The streamer, Blue Sound Node 2i. That's what I have. That is super popular. Oh, the headphones are Sennheiser HD650 with a Violectic 280 Final Edition headphone amp which he says is really, really good. Thanks. Yes, we are, we are back. And my name is Steve Guttenberg. If you like the show, please hit that like button and also consider subscribing if you have yet to do so. The other thing you might want to check out, maybe, maybe, is my Patreon, which can be found at p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash audiophiliac. And there is definitely a link to the Patreon below in the description. And with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you as always for watching. And I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.